This is brought to you by Forethought, building AI agents for every customer moment. All right, so Lovable, according to your Twitter, you're building the last piece of software. What does that mean? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Lovable today is a tool where you go and you ask it to build software for you. Sure. And then it builds that software. Okay. And, and the, the, the last piece of software <laughs> is, well, as humans don't need to write code in the future, you can see this as the last part of the human written code. Do you truly believe that like, this is the end of the stack, that we've reached the final, the final layer of software development? Or is that just a, a mission for the company? So that's just a mission yeah. for the company currently. But things, as people might be aware, they're moving faster and faster. So I'm confident that we're going to get to a place where 99% of all software is, is created by, still created by humans, but talking to an AI that helped them go through all the steps of understanding what your users want and figuring out what's the best interactions to, in that software mm -hmm. and ensuring that it runs reliably and so on. Yeah. So I'm interested, I mean, Lovable is one of, I believe, the fastest growing companies in startup history. Uh, and you said in an earlier tweet, when you had gone from zero to four million in ARR in a month, that you were the fastest growing startup in EU history. Uh, now you're at, what, 70 million ARR? Are you, are you still the fast? 75, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I was under a little bit there. Uh, <laughs> as of what, last week? Or, uh, and so are you, are you still the fastest growing startup in EU history? Or was, uh, was that first phase even faster? Or what's, how's the current progress in, in maintaining yeah. that lead, maintaining that title? So look, yeah. I, I wish everyone was super public about their data so we could know <laughs> how we rank in each part of the journey. Um, but... No, I, I think it's one of the first tests if yeah. you look at the full duration. Yeah. How, many, how many folks here have either used Lovable or Vive coded some kind of software? Okay. All right, we've got like a 60%, you, you're missing 70%. Out, you're missing out? Yeah, yeah anyone who hasn't, uh, this, is, this lovable.dev is the way to do it. So I'm interested, like, I've, I've, I've used Lovable. It's an amazing tool, and I think that like many people, I had this experience where I tried to make a website, I tried to you know, take uh, an example that existed and replicate it in, in Lovable, and then I reached a sort of like last mile problem of like finishing it or you know, adding uh, analytics or adding certain tools that you know, maybe the libraries aren't perfectly supported or something like that. Like, I'm interested, you know, given your user base, like, are they sort of graduating from, from Lovable to more aggressive, more hardcore tools at this point? Or are you adding features fast enough that that last mile problem keeps kind of receding into the distance? Like, what's your perspective on the kind of like, yeah, the asymptote of, of you know, where, where software goes on Lovable today yeah. and, and where it'll be in a year or two? Yeah, so how far do you get today? Um, can I just take a step back and unpack like, yeah. who's using it and what, what is the, these use cases? If you're building a startup, you're often told you should build like for one specific persona and really mm -hmm. make it amazing for them. Yeah. And we've been successful without doing that. Not doing that. <laughs> yes. No focus. So, well, it's, focus is overrated. It has hundreds of different use cases, which yeah. is pretty fun. Uh, the ones we're most excited about and where we see the most love and pull and like, wow, people get hooked uh, are founders specifically okay. who are building out a new products from starting at nothing. Mm -hmm. And um, a large part of what the founder does is to understand what is it that, that users want, and what they want to pay for. And I think there's many, many thousands of founders that have gone all the way to get product market fit with Lovable. And some are making millions of dollars on, on Lovable built applications. Um, and, but there's more people who build simple things. And the simple things you can reliably build end to end without needing to use any other tool. When the product does get super complex, um, you, you do need more of the tools that software engineers use to ensure that as you're changing one thing, mm -hmm. it doesn't break somewhere else. Yeah. So, so it's a bit of a combination, and if you're, but if you're very patient and you become very good at vibe coding, <laughs> <laughs> then you, get very, you generally get very Just fun. get in the flow state. Um, yeah. What are the sort of like, top three or top five websites built on Lovable today? And, or how do you measure that? Is it by DAU, MAU, revenue, just total number of websites built on Lovable? Like, yep. yeah, what, what metrics are you targeting and what gets you excited? <clears throat> uh, so I, I, I know one company that's growing super fast. I know them because it's in Stockholm. Okay. Uh, and, nice. and they're building a like, automated marketing tool for like a SaaS business on okay. top of it. 
um, in terms of the ones that have a lot of uh, page use, I think those are like simple, weird tools, like uh, um, monitoring what soccer games are running. Or, mm. I think they, there's something like that that has a lot of users. And then we're also now, we launched a team, team plan where companies can work and collaborate. And we're seeing company, companies, um, there's a large real estate company in the US that have this workflow where they set up new websites for each new type of uh, real estate that they want to sell. And, mm. and they're using it really in production and move 10 or 100 times faster than when they had an engineering team that they had to go back and forth with. That, yeah, do you, do you see a world where you have a particular type of, you know, a few segments of users that are sort of power users of Lovable and you start really homing in on their needs, like you start, really, you know, nailing these real estate use cases or, you know, the soccer game use yeah, cases no, or whatever? No, that's like, too specific, like, I would that's say. That's too specific? Yeah, yeah. So, Is there, so are there broader categories? Yeah, so there are yeah. broader categories, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. So, so I would say on the broader categories, you, you have the founders that are building out uh, a new, completely new company, mm -hmm. and, and they need to set up payments, analytics, as you mentioned, and then, then they even want, need support to understand how do I get distribution on top of this. Mm -hmm. And that, th those are some things we're helping on also on the non-technical side. Um, so the other broad categories are in larger companies, I've known product leaders that try to get their idea into the, the roadmap and they mm, try to write a document and share it around, mm -hmm. very abstract. Mm -hmm. Then they built a lovable app and when the, um, uh, quarterly planning came around, everyone had used it. It was like viral inside of a 500 people company. Mm. And it was instantly like, yes, we're building this because I know how it feels, exactly how it would affect our users. Um, and apart from these two larger categories, it's, as you mentioned, designers, product managers, others do pro prototype. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone else, like small businesses, uh, just CEOs building internal tools to m m make their day-to-day -day work more automated. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned earlier something I find interesting, like sort of the hardest part of being a founder is in some sense distribution and discovery, right? And it sort of always has been, always will be, right? Um, I'm intrigued, like, what are you doing and sort of what tools are you giving these founders or these developers on Lovable to get their websites discovered? I know you have sort of some featured stuff on the homepage. Are you planning on enabling more cross-promotion amongst Lovable websites? Like, what's your sort of perspective on how much it's your job to try to make sure that these websites get discovered versus just letting people build and kind of letting the internet, you know, send traffic where, yeah. where it will. Um, I, I think like the best place to get discovered varies by what type of product you're doing. So mm -hmm. inherently many need face-to-face -face conversations with you, your users. Um, but w what we're adding is that you look, when you built your product, you could one click uh, uh, and you get guided. Do you want to get help create content that explains the product mm -hmm. that it gets pushed or do Google's paid ads or other type of ads to, uh, to grow your business mm -hmm. with support of analyzing which, which of these channels works best specifically for you. Um, it's, it's not something we built out, out yet, but, but it's coming. Thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, that part. Okay. Yeah. So, somewhere along the line. Um, obviously, there's this whole hi history of website builders, basically ever since there's been in the internet, right? Yep. There's, you know, Go back to GeoCities, and then of course, like you know, Squarespace and Wix, and sort of that generation. Like, how do you see Lovable in that kind of like historical evolution of creating websites? Like, is this you know, ten or a hundred times bigger than a Squarespace or Wix because truly anyone can use it now, or is demand ultimately the problem for websites? Like, what's your sort of perspective on the the evolution of you know? creating websites and, and how big that opportunity is over time. Yeah, so yeah. You, these tools have mostly made it possible to build a static website sure. where you put information on them. And I, I think, so we have 70,000 apps built per day. I okay. think it's much more than uh, other platforms. <laughs> I don't know them. Um, <laughs> and um, more, but more interesting, interestingly, people are building real products. With, mm -hmm. Like you log in, you sign up to pay, and, and so on, and that and that's, has been much harder traditionally to do in a, a way that's like that is a, a good, lovable product. So the interactivity element, or yep. sort of the dynamic nature of and lovable, the flexibility, like all substantially add, bigger opportunities. Add AI capabilities here, for example. That's just one or a few prompts, and you get the AI capabilities in your product. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested, I noticed, you know, you had just had a weekend where you were giving Lovable away for free. Uh, and 
obviously, I think a lot of discussion here is how, how expensive some of the modern generation of AI models is. Like, how did you find that as a trade-off? You, know, you saw this massive surge in traffic. I'm sure it cost you guys a decent amount of money. Like, is that something you hope for in the future, that you know, Lovable can be free for everyone all the time? Is it sort of a, a worthy yeah. trade-off? So yeah. this, this was yeah. not just us. This was thanks to great partners with like OpenAI. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. They're uh, here. To, you should grab to them. make that possible <laughs> and, and some of the other partners. Yeah. <laughs> We, we want to build, like, what's fun about building Lovable is that there's really this community uh, of people that have felt the empowerment of being able to build that are super excited and we want to be able to always be, give things back to the community that we have. Mm -hmm. So maybe That's not free forever unless OpenAI. No, that was, that was, that was the weekend. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Happy to talk to OpenAI about the free forever. <laughs> As, yeah, you can yeah, yeah, please, yeah. Uh, yeah, please, please give them uh, an option. <laughs> Um, I'm interested in sort of the, the stack of, you know, these creation tools, right? I mean, you have kind of direct competitors, like, you know, Bolt is one that comes up from time to time. You have Figma, which is coming on stage later, which is enabling designers to turn their designs into web pages. You have, you know, Cursor, which is sort of, you know, lower down the stack where you're actually editing the code much more. Like, you know, and then I, mean, I guess you have ultimately OpenAI, which is sort of the, the one box to rule them all that can kind of do everything for you uh, in life and in work, right? Like, do you see that each of these is a different product layer where, you know, somebody can win or there could be multiple winners, um, you know, or do you feel like some of these pieces are going to merge or that, like, you know, ultimately there's going to be consolidation between these types of companies? Yeah. Uh, I think... It's hard to predict the future <laughs> when AI comes around and becomes smarter than us, yeah. uh, generally. But I and I, I don't know so much about like looking at comp competitors or people doing similar things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think what we're all about is pushing what are new in ways of interacting, what are the most important new capabilities that you want to integrate and create the most coherent experience building things on the internet or building things in general. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of space for different players. <laughs> yeah. So you and Figma can coexist in the future, even if they're trying to let you know everyone type in a box on Figma and create a website as well. Yeah, hundred um, percent. We only have a little bit of time left, but I know you and I, or you, you wanted to get into some some of your your hot takes on the future of humanity and where things are going with with jobs in the era of AGI. So I'm going to pivot completely from a narrow discussion of of lovable and more broadly like. You know, how far away do you think we are from AGI? How does that change the nature of human work and human life? Like, what's your sort of like big picture perspective of you know how we're living two, five, ten years from now with with or without AGI? Yeah, I guess. Good yeah. questions. I, uh, <laughs> you said you were passionate more about, about this so I'm during yeah, dinner. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I want to get the good stuff. Uh, uh, but <laughs> look, like one of the things I'm most excited about is that us humans we aren't so good at getting along always, uh, <laughs> and if if our world leaders uh, find ways to leverage AI to understand how to have more of a win-win dynamic between all humans, then um, that's going to be great. And do you think I, AGI is going to enable that? Or Well, I mean, if you, if you make sure that the world leaders have this uh, om omniscient advisor that knows everything and can like, uh, figure out what the decision would lead to, okay. I definitely think it's, I mean, it's extremely valuable. And um, if these omniscient things also talk to each other about like, what are the potential negative scenarios for everyone and potential good, good scenarios for everyone, um, yeah, we're going to have a much better society. Uh, okay. There's also <laughs> risks in that <laughs> things are just moving so fast with technical progress that us and uh, humans are like, we're operating at a too slow uh, frequency mm -hmm. compared to the technological change. And it's, it's hard for us to understand, um, like, what does a war m even mean uh, in now or in a few decades time? And okay. like, the, how bad is that? Does everyone just get These wiped? a lot of big questions. Uh, I, I feel know. like, so you're saying we got to hand the wheel to the AGI or to multiple AGI and yeah, they're going to negotiate advice, with each other and yeah. that's going to end war or something or dramatically diminish the, the amount of war. I mean, I'm, I'm optimistic about it, but I, I think okay. there's huge uh, potential negative consequences as well, depending on how hu okay. like our, our human values are translated when we have AI that like, just empowers and puts a lot of lots of more leverage in, for, uh, to people in a lot with power. 
All right. Yep. Good ending. Thanks so much, Anton. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.